Hi, today we're going to cover a very basic thing in Maya. So we create a cube and if we now go to the, to the attribute editor, we see different tabs. This is the shader, this is the shading group, which is basically um, linking the object to the shader. Um, this is the polycube node, which is in this case really interesting because it only you only get some node like this, polycube or polysphere, if you use one of these, these two shelves or go or create and um, create a new object because that's uh, basically you can imagine it like the machine that creates this cube because it's procedurally generated because Maya didn't doesn't just take this cube uh, and loads it from your disk it basically generates it so it takes a width and a depth and you can set subdivisions and it's procedurally generated and that's what this polycube node does and this polycube node if we go to the um, node editor, we can see this very nicely. This polycube node that generates the cube, in this case, plugs its output into the shape node. If we now delete history, I'm going to do this really quickly, um, we see that the polycube node vanishes because it, the information that this uh, created is now stored in the shape node. Basically the shape node now stores point data. Where is vertex 1? Like it stores versus vertex 1, versus vertex 2. For every vertex, it stores its position uh, relative in, in the space. In this case, it's actually the position it's in. And then this shape node has a transform node. And you see in the node editor, it doesn't seem to be connected. Um, but if we look into the outliner, we can see this is the transform node and this is the shape node. If you don't see it like this, probably you see it like this. Uh, just right click and see and select shapes. Because usually if you're working with this cube, you don't need to know if it's if you're if you're on the shape node or the transform because for you it's just the cube and you're working with it. But actually what's happening is you've got a transform node and the shape node. And the transform node stores where this cube is. Oops. But the shape node stores what this cube is like, what it looks like, where the vertices are. Okay, so we have the transform and the shape node, and um, if you've just created this, uh, you've got also the uh, creation node, which creates the object. Okay, and in here you can see all these tabs. This is the transform, where you have the, uh, the transformations, translate, rotate, scale, and this is the shape node, where you can, for example, set uh, R node settings, if you, can, if you want to add displacement or subdivisions. Uh, for rendering, or if you want to see it as a smooth mesh or something, that you can set, or, you, or that you can set in here in the shape node. Okay, if we move the cube around, um, we can see the transform node in the channel box. It's visible. It stores the transforms, and we, if we rotate it, it's going to get stored there as well. So it's basically numbers that are stored on this transform node. If we go to the shape node, we don't have that. The shape node doesn't store that uh, information. It's not important. The shape node only stores where each vertice is, but where the entire object, how it's rotated and where it's positioned, that's stored in the transform node. And if we not uh, use freeze transformations, we set all these to zero, but why doesn't it move back? That's because all this transformation is um, getting transferred into the shape node. So now the shape node stores that this vertice is rotated a little bit and that this one is rotated even more. Basically you bake down the transformations into the shape node. So now the shape node stores this state here and the transform node is at zero, zero, zero. So that's how it, that's how um, Maya works under the hood. Um, it is always nice to take a look at um, the node editor and see how it, uh, how it's built up there. Um, and basically you can, you can, you can, you can see this as the same thing. So this shape node it's the same as this shape node here in the outliner. And this transform node that we have here, it's the same as this transform node. And um, in here in the attribute editor, this is the transform and this is the shape node. So this just, just basically displays the attributes of your nodes. You might also be wondering what these two nodes here are. This is probably you already used before. This is the Lambert one. It's a shader, which basically gives your object the appearance like that. This face is way darker because we're not looking at it, right? It's a shader, and this is the initial shading group, which basically connects the shader 
to the object. And it has some more functions. You can, for example, use a displacement material, or you can, instead of a surface material, use a volume material. Um, but yeah, that's basically how uh, how it's set up. So we can see the shape node clocks into the initial shading group, and if we um, expand that, it's going right down, further to the lights and to the rendering. And um, in the input for the surface shader, there's the Lambert one. Why is this called initial shading group? It's simple because this is the initial shader that's um, that's coming with every Maya instance. Um, it's there by default. We can create a new shader if we want, and that's going to create a new shader and a new shading group. Let's create a nano shader, and we're going to see this nano shader gets created and the shading group gets gonna, gets created. And if we select the object and display it in the node editor, we're going to see that the shape node now plugs into the AI standard surface shading group. So the shading group connects the sh shape to um, the shader. If you have any more questions regarding this, uh, you can leave a comment and I will try to answer them. I'm not sure how many comments will come, but uh, I'm gonna try to answer them if I can. Um, okay, and I hope you enjoyed this video and I wish you a great day. Bye bye.